Hello everyone, good morning. I hope that all of you present can, uh, can hear me. As it's already 10 o'clock and we have a busy agenda for this morning, I would suggest that we start. For sure, we will have other colleagues that will, uh, will join us as the number of registered participants has been high. Uh, for this event. So first of all, welcome, officially welcome to, to all of you that took the time this morning to be with us for this webinar that we are organizing on greening your events. My name is Ana Maria Palados and on behalf of the Green Growth community, but not only, on behalf of all the horizontal projects and thematic communities of Interreg Med, uh, I will have the pleasure to uh, to guide you through, um, uh, through this event that is co-organized uh, by, uh, by all the thematic communities from the MED area. It's a pleasure to see that this webinar uh, that we agreed not so long ago to, to organize to promote this concept of uh, greening the events has been so successful. Uh, we have received the interest of over 130 participants to attend it. We are already around half of it here, and I'm sure that the rest will soon join us. So it's clear that it's a theme that attracts us and it's of interest for, um, for our program. The purpose of this webinar, as we have anticipated to you in the announcement, is to present the sustainability guidelines for events, a work that we initiated within the green growth community and the biodiversity community, and to which all the other horizontal projects and the thematic communities afterwards joined, and that we have presented at least a part of it during the midterm event. So first of all, we would like to show to you what are the guidelines made for, what are the main instructions and recommendations that they encompass. But we would also like to collect from you ideas, inputs, feedback, so that we can further improve them because it's, of course, a work in progress and take into account the large number of projects and tools that we develop in our communities and in the Interreg Med program, I'm sure that these guidelines will offer a very valorizing context so that everyone is pretty their approaches and expertise here. Last but not least, we would like with this webinar also to plan some future activities that we can do together to promote the concept of green or sustainable events across the Interreg Med program and area. Concerning the agenda that, uh, that we proposed you, you have probably seen that we have been ambitious. So it's a short webinar, but very dynamic one. Uh, it will be a marathon of joint interventions from all the thematic communities that are present in Interreg Med program on various areas. We'll be speaking about catering, about energy, about accommodation, about mobility, but also about social and creative considerations that are triggered by the organization of events. You will find the agenda of the webinar on the right side of the screen, on top of it, so you can scroll it and see what is waiting for you in the next one hour and a half. We are also very happy that the Joint Secretariat will, uh, will join us uh, in this webinar uh, towards the end of it uh, to show us what they are doing also in this area and to see how we can find synergies among the, the work that we are doing as thematic communities and their preoccupations as Joint Secretariat in the area of sustainability of events. So, how we are going to get organized for the next one hour and a half. In fact, it's not so difficult, even if it's uh, quite a lot of us. Uh, it will be important to stick to some basic rules uh, because we have a lot of interventions, we are a lot of participants, and the time is very short. One hour and a half will go immediately. Uh, what you need to know as attendees is that you will have two options to interact with the rest of the participants and also with the speakers that are going to present today. The easiest 
option is to use the chat, uh, which is available on the right side of the screen. And uh, where you can chat, you can send your questions, recommendations, only to uh, a part of the persons which um, only to some participants or you can send it to everyone present in the webinar. Um, it's important to know that we will not take questions uh, during the presentations, otherwise we risk to um, uh, not to, to stick to the agenda, but we will take them in a, in a, in a section, in a 20-minute section that we have foreseen at the end of the presentation, so to, in, one, in around one hour. However, we highly encourage you to address the questions, the doubts, the recommendations that you have along the webinar during the various presentations that are going to be done by our colleagues and we will try to address all of them ideally if not a part of them during this interactive session that we have foreseen at in one hour however we also give you the possibility to have a live intervention and to speak to all the other participants of the webinar if you have things to share which you consider to be relevant for all. Uh, of course, that as we are so many, because we are so many, we won't have the chance to give the mic, the floor to all of you, so we would like to use this option really if it's necessary and you have very important and uh, relevant things to share with the others. In this case, if you want to have a live intervention, you will need to raise the hand. This is done from uh, a special button which is situated on the uh, upside of your screen. And us as organizers, when we see that you have raised the hand, we will give you the right to speak during the interactive session, so not before that. Then I would like to tell you that we will um, uh, record this webinar and this will be posted on YouTube later on so that we give the chance to those that have not, that couldn't attend it today to, to follow it and um, it's good to know that we are doing, uh, we are doing this because perhaps it can affect some of your interventions. Then, entering a bit in the topic of our webinar after this um, organizational issues, hoping that I've been clear, uh, one can ask himself, herself, why we decided to do a webinar and to focus some of our joint efforts on this area of event sustainability or uh, greening our events. Well, there are several reasons. First of all is that within Interreg Med, both the modular and the horizontal projects, they are organizing yearly hundreds, even thousands of events that benefit of the attendance of thousands of participants. The events, they have, first of all, a significant environmental impact. As you can see from this slide where we have put some key numbers, the, this, um, and uh, this slide has been also presented during the midterm event in Rome. So uh, the events, they have significant environmental impacts, but not only, they can have also some important social and environmental consequences. So trying to deal with their sustainability impacts is first of all a question of mitigation. But also it can be a positive and proactive attitude when trying to make our events in a more sustainable way, because we can give an example to the public and to the stakeholders that we walk the talk of sustainability. Also, the events, through the capacity that they have to gather different type of partners and the public, they are also perfect context to influence them concerning sustainability issues. And last but not least, the theme of sustainability in the event organization is a very broad and transversal theme, and it enables us as horizontal projects, as thematic communities in the Interreg Met program, to be able to work together, to have joint initiatives, and that each of us uh, is bringing a part of the tools and approaches that the modular projects are developing and are valorizing them on a common ground. And this is very important for us because it enables, uh, enables us to work really as a regional large thematic community composed of all the horizontal and modular projects. 
you, uh, you can see the guidelines. You can access them from the link from the next slide. Um, but on the and you can access them from the Interreg Med website. However, there you don't have the last version of it. We will give it up uh, because the, inter the JS still needs to um, uh, to upload it. But we will give you the possibility at the end of this webinar to download the latest version of the sustainability guidelines and as well as the PowerPoint that we have been using during this webinar. So at the end, I will invite all of you uh, to uh, to download them in case you find them useful for your work. And this has been all from my side as a, as a welcoming, as an introduction. And now it's a great pleasure to, uh, to begin to pass the floor to my colleagues from the Senati communities that will guide you in a nice journey throughout different themes. And uh, we will start with what is in the stomach, with the catering, um, with the catering area. And I will invite the green growth and the biodiversity communities to make us a short presentation of what's inside the catering thematic of sustainable events. And more precisely, I'll invite Merce from the green growth to introduce us in this topic. Merce, the floor is yours now. Thank you, Anna, and good morning to everyone. My name is Merce Bayroda, and I work at the Beta Tech Center at the University of Vic uh, in, in Catalonia, Spain. And I'm the project manager of the Med Green Growth Community. Uh, but here I will present these slides about catering uh, on behalf of the Med Green Growth Community and the Biodiversity Protection Community. So food sustainability as an overall environmental strategy is easy to implement, and it's probably one of the easiest uh, topics that we can address in our events. So most meetings, as you know, uh, require some form of catering, uh, from informal snacks to coffee breaks uh, uh, to formal dinners. And catering especially uh, covers all aspects of the provision of meals, including the procurement of food, then handling of waste produced by the scattering, and also the, the transport generated by the, by the catering uh, and, the, and the food products. So the environmental impact of the food and drinks we, we consume at these events vary at a great extent depending on what it is, so what food we eat and we serve, where this food comes from, and how it was produced. Therefore, uh, to become more sustainable from a, from a food uh, perspective, we should select venues, restaurants, and conference centers that can offer uh, this kind of option, so the, that they can offer menus that are all about quality, seasonal, and locally produced uh, food uh, products. So we, we should select these uh, venues or, or, or restaurants that already have this, this policy in place, or if it's not possible because uh, there, there are not these options where we want to organize the event, we should make sure that we talk to the managers of these uh, venues and, and restaurants uh, so to encourage them to, to follow this type of uh, recommendations that we are suggesting. So we think that um, this is not that difficult to achieve, and we strongly encourage to try to do it if you haven't uh, done it so far. So a special attention should be put into uh, these topics that we are showing you on the left side of the slide. So one of the main important ones is that you provide local, seasonal, and fresh food and drinks. Uh, this issue is, is very easy here in the Mediterranean area since we are producing great uh, and fresh and very tasty food products such as uh, vegetables and fruits. We, we would also encourage you to serve organic food if, if possible. In this way, we will use less packaging. The transport will be less because we, we, we consume zero uh, kilometer food products and it will be also healthier for us. We also uh, recommend you to serve, if possible, fair trade products. For instance, for these products that are not produced in the Mediterranean area or in Europe, such as coffee, sugar, and tea. 
and to serve them in bulk dispensers, not in individual uh, containers to reduce the amount of waste that is produced. Concerning water, uh, we strongly suggest you to serve them in, in big jars or um, glass containers and also uh, to provide water uh, dispensers at the uh, location of the meetings and venues. So people that are already bringing their uh, water bottles can, can refill them uh, to avoid uh, wasting plastic bottles. You should make sure that endangered species uh, are, are forbidden in your menu, uh, partic uh, particularly for, for fish. And if you have some doubts about it, uh, about the type of fish or, or seafood that you want to provide in the menu, you can check out the WWF uh, seafood guides uh, that will help you in making a solid and uh, air-friendly uh, choice on this issue. And also, we, we will suggest that you don't provide uh, red meat, since it requires much more energy and, and water than, than producing grains and, and vegetables, for instance. Last, uh, but not least, we, we also strongly recommend that the leftovers, the spare food, don't go to waste, but that you talk to the uh, managers of the restaurants and the caterings and ask them if they have uh, some charity or some place where they can bring this food that has not been used. And also, uh, if this option is not possible, to uh, make compost out of it. So uh, we reduce the amount of waste again. So this compost could be used for uh, uh, fertilizers later on. So as you see in this photo, it's, it's, it's just an example of uh, what type of fruits uh, we, we, we recommend to use. Uh, maybe it's not necessary to serve uh, pineapples, mangoes, or papayas that are uh, produced in South America or, or Asia. But we, we provide uh, fruits that are grown here, such as grapes or mandarins or uh, peaches, strawberries. It just depends on the season and what is produced in the, in the country where we organize the, the event. So by following these uh, recommendations, we are uh, um, not only uh, having uh, healthier uh, meals for us, but we are also supporting the, the projects of the Interreg Med program that share these same values and, and, and objectives. For instance, in the Med Green Growth community, we have projects such as Camarg, Madre, PEFMED, or Aristoil that can help you identifying local producers and suppliers to optimize the, the picking and delivery of seasonal, low environmental footprint, and, and tasty food products. And on the other side, the biodiversity protection community has some projects uh, such as Fish MPA Blue 2 and Confish, which seek the involvement of, of, of fishermen to manage the fisheries in a sustainable way in order to, to protect marine resources. And please, if you come off to the next slide. OK, okay. Um, sorry. There it goes, OK. So the consumption of food and drinks uh, generates a large amount of uh, paper, plastics, and organic waste. And for this reason, we, we have to talk to the, to the catering service to ensure that they don't provide disposable uh, cutlery. And uh, we, we, we guarantee the use of conventional dishes, glasses, uh, and cutlery made of glass or, or ceramic that can be reused again. We, we can also promote finger food, so we, we avoid the use of uh, single-use plastics and excessive, uh, excessive uh, packaging just to serve uh, small quantities of, of food. Then it's important to inform the, the caterer on the exact number of participants. And uh, if possible, they should be able to adapt to the requirements um, uh, in, a, in a short notice. So for instance, uh, we expect uh, 100 people in the event, but finally only 75 some people come. So we, we tell them that there is less people uh, in the meals uh, in the 
in the catering, and they uh, so they don't provide that much food, and not so much food is wasted. Is wasted. Also, a very important tip is uh, don't fill your dishes with uh, hundreds of food that uh, uh, you will later uh, waste, uh, uh, that you will later don't eat. So please just. Uh, um, be conscious of that, and and, uh, and the amount of waste that is the mind, the amount of food that is wasted is is really large. So uh, we have to make sure that we 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 don't do that. And last, we should provide recycling bins such for plastic, organic waste, or glass. And we should also inform the and the participants to use it uh, and to do it well. So in this way. We are not only aligned with the European strategy for plastics, that it's very a hot topic now, uh, to protect our environment and reduce marine litter, greenhouse gas emissions, and the dependence on, on, on fossil fuels. But by following these uh, recommendations, we are also supporting uh, the work that our modular projects are doing, such as the Medsy Litter and Plastic Busters MPAs from the Biodiversity Protection Community that are working on monitoring protocols uh, for uh, floating and ingested uh, litter to, to protect uh, biodiversity, as well as the Act for Litter project uh, that is um, working on measurements uh, to preserve some natural ecosystems for marine protected areas. So that's all for the catering. And I'm sure that if we all try to follow these guidelines, uh, we will uh, reduce our environmental uh, footprint. Thank you, Marisa, uh, for this presentation. It's clear that the sector of event organization is uh, very dynamic in terms of flows of materials, and catering is one area where these flows happen. Uh, but also uh, for the organization of our event, there is a lot um, of amount of energy moving around. And with this, uh, I introduce our uh, next presentation, which is dealing with energy consumption for event organization that has been co-prepared by the Renewable Energy and Efficient Buildings Communities. And the presentation will be done by Cynthia Echave. So, Cynthia, the floor is yours now. Okay, thank you. Uh, good morning. I'm very pleased to be here with you and to uh, talk about the energy aspects related to um, green events. So uh, on behalf of the renewable energy community and efficient buildings community, I will present you a summarize of some of the uh, most relevant things that we can take into account when we choose our venue. Uh, of course, it's, uh, I think that it's not so easy, even that the catering is not an easy uh, aspect to, to solve when we are uh, looking for the, uh, the offers that we have. The venue probably is also uh, somehow uh, difficult, but we, uh, fortunately we count with some examples and with some advances in this, in this thing. So first of all, I think that it's uh, interesting what uh, Anna was saying at the beginning about having somehow uh, the experience that the people and visitors and all the attendants of uh, an event have this uh, experience of uh, making use and to be uh, aware of different aspects related to sustainability. So in the case of the venue, we should think about an experience of a building or of an architecture that uh, deals with a more sustainable um, performance. And that means not only the energy consumption, but as well the quality of the spaces. So um, just to summarize, uh, for example, some uh, now we count in, in Europe and in different uh, areas in the world with different kind of certifications. So we have uh, like a LEED uh, certification uh, from the Building Council uh, from the United States that it is really a uh, spread out in, in, the, in, in a lot of countries, and, or BREAM, for example, so that they uh, make some standards about which are the, the basic aspects of a building to achieve a, a, a good energy performance. So in this sense, uh, it is interesting if you can find out uh, a venue that um, has somehow this label. It's like a, like a, 
uh, ha having a, a levelization as well of the uh, of the buildings. So in this sense, what are the aspects that we should also look forward? Because some sometimes we we don't have a nearby uh, a building or a venue that can have this kind of certification, but we can assume certain qualities and uh, aspects on the architecture that can uh, help us to uh, encourage these uh, um, be a climatic um, performers or sustainable performance. So for example, natural lighting and ventilation of, uh, of the venue rooms are, it's a really important aspect to consider. So for example, if you're aiming to have some workshops or um, spaces where our people uh, need to work and to discuss uh, or have some training sessions, it's really uh, good to have uh, natural lighting. So avoid to have uh, artificial lighting during the day. And as well the ventilation. So natural ventilation means to have uh, to choose those spaces that can be uh, practical windows, not hermetic or uh, just glass uh, hermetic uh, facade. At the same time, the heating and cooling systems. Uh, if you, if we are counting with this kind of uh, active systems, it is important that they can be controlled in each room. So we don't have decentralized uh, temperature by uh, all the whole building, so we can be able to control it. So this is important. Another thing, it's uh, related to obviously the efficient lighting. So you can count uh, with a, a wide number of uh, buildings that already are incorporating these kind of um, measures to uh, to have a, a, a lower energy consumption. And this probably would be more uh, about how the, uh, the energy, uh, uh, specifically the energy consumption of the building can be achieved as a more bioclimatic uh, solutions. But another aspect interesting to, to visualize and somehow to uh, to encourage when we are choosing a venue, and it's about the energy renewable, uh, renewable energy supply. So we, we can be able to choose those uh, venues that actually form part, uh, or they have a uh, in situ production, especially PV energy, or they have a contract with a renewable energy source uh, company. So this is important to also highlight it. So uh, as I was saying, probably you don't have a certification for the overall venue, but to highlight these kind of uh, good practices is really relevant. And uh, finally, it's also interesting to look forward, uh, as I said in the beginning, spaces, comfortable open spaces and comfortable uh, indoor spaces. In the, in the sense to, um, to be also not aware about the kilowatts that we are consumption that we're consuming, but as well the quality of this architecture of or these open spaces. So um, ventilated and greening and shaded areas, it's it's uh, really important to have also a good uh, atmosphere for networking. So. Uh, if we see uh, some of the examples, actually, uh, from the fission buildings communities, uh, they're very focused on the public buildings. So even though that we don't have a, a specifically an example for a venue for an event, uh, I was thinking to suggest you to also th see those buildings, probably uh, public buildings or from uh, like a schools or uh, civic centers, community centers, that probably they can have this kind of characteristics and they can allow you to, and they provide you the space and the, 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 the facilities to make your, uh, to, 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 to give you the opportunity to make your event or your, uh, as a venue. So uh, I, we, we choose uh, several examples here, for example, in, in Med Area, as in Portugal, we have this uh, Solar 21, or uh, the, the building of the ICTA, it's a research um, university uh, and a research department in, in Spain, in Catalonia. Or, for example, the, uh, the uh, Congress uh, venue in Valence, or uh, in France, there's uh, several uh, cultural and festive center that they have uh, these uh, like uh, very natural and um, uh, bioclimatic performance of their uh, their designing. So um, 
just to see somehow how we can uh, see for these kind of examples. Uh, it's just to be aware about the natural lighting, for example, and to uh, to have this uh, opportunity to bring uh, spaces with lighting and, for example, uh, the open spaces as well, having a, a comfortable and, uh, and, um, and a greening experience. I think it's, uh, in general, uh, repeating the uh, visualizing the experience of a, of a mood, of a kind of a sustainable lifestyle, I think it's uh, really important as a, as awareness uh, exercise of the green event. So uh, I think it's uh, it's it's all. If you uh, if you have any question, we can be uh, here to answer you any any doubt. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Cynthia, for this. I think uh, especially the pictures they all give us uh, uh, the wish to be um, to be present in such uh, in such nice and environmental friendly areas. And indeed, choosing um, choosing the locations of an event might be might seem a very tri tricky and challenging question because in many in most of the occasions and of the times the, the choosing option is not with us and we have different type of limitations. Uh, and this uh, this idea brings me to our next presentation related to what accommodation and locations to be select when we are organizing our events. And before giving the floor to our colleagues, uh, I would like to remind you to not to hesitate to use the chat option and to write down there uh, if you have questions, ideas, <coughs> comments, everything that is related uh, to the presentations that we are making to know that the messages they reach you. So, um, on behalf of the Blue Growth and Sustainable Tourism Communities, I will give the floor to Céline Dubreuil and Roberto Grassi to introduce us in the world of accommodation and location for sustainable events. Céline, Roberto, the floor is yours now. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Anna. Good morning, everybody. My name is Roberto Grassi and uh, I am the coordinator of the Blue Tour Med project, the horizontal project of the sustainable tourism community of the Interreg Med. I have prepared these uh, two slides together with Céline Dubreuil, the colleague from the community of the Blue Growth, and we have decided to uh, divide our presentation in two slides, one dedicated to the choice of the venue and one dedicated to the choice of the accommodation, which are very similar but with some differences. I will concentrate on the first aspect, uh, it means the choice of the venue. Mm, many things have been already said uh, and by the colleagues that uh, have spoken before. Uh, regarding the uh, characteristics of the venue and of the services that must be uh, prepared uh, for the event. I will focus a uh, little bit more on the first choice that we as organizers have to take uh, and to have in mind when uh, we need to uh, organize an event. Uh, we must think that um, the participants to a conference or an event uh, can be considered in some way as tourists. In fact, the business tourism is uh, a, itself a sector of tourism. Uh, why? Because the participants uh, to the conference are doing more or less the same activity of uh, have the same needs of the tourists. They need to travel to reach the place, they need to stay in the place, uh, they need to sleep and to eat, um, they need to move locally. Um, so um, let's say from as uh, the point of view of the sustainability, we can consider an event like a, a travel for tourists. And in this sense, uh, the suggestions that we as a community of sustainable tourism can give uh, in this uh, webinar is to try to choose a place uh, in 
take a decision about when and where to organize the event. About the when, uh, the, the period of the year, it would be much better to uh, choose a low season period. And about the where, the place where to organize, it, what it must be, uh, it should be better to organize it uh, outside the, the most overcrowded places. Why? Because in this way we can be, um, we can have a, a lower impact on the, on the local communities hosting the event, on the local population hosting the event. And we can, in this way, be more sustainable and our participants can live an experience, uh, let's say, more uh, responsible, uh, responsible. So the suggestion is to choose low seasons, if possible, and uh, less visited places. Uh, in this way, we can also, let's say, have a positive, have a positive, a positive impact in the sense of uh, um, broadening the, the economic season of the hosting community and uh, supporting the local activities uh, during um, a big part of the year. Um, in this sense, some of our projects uh, are working uh, to try to study the problems of uh, the overcrowding of places and also uh, try to um, create new offers that are more sustainable. For example, the Alter Eco project is studying the carrying capacity of a city. It will give a tool to the cities to study and to measure uh, what is their carrying capacity in terms of hosting people. Uh, the project estimate, but many more projects are studying offers for ecotourism or in general sustainable tourism uh, working with the local communities. Um, the project Blue Island is producing guidelines uh, for the local authorities to calculate, to better manage the waste uh, related to the tourism pressure in Ireland and so on. Um, of course, when we choose a venue like this, so far from the uh, mass tourism way and places, uh, we must take into consideration some general recommendation uh, that, for example, the place is well connected to the public transport, that the place is at a walking distance to the public transport that the size of the meetings rooms are adapted to the real needs of our event and that some other basic service like Wi-Fi access are um, guaranteed. Uh, in this case, we are sure that we do not um, um, enlarge our um, CO2 uh, footprint, but we can reduce it. Um, so this is um, related to the choice of the venue. I will now pass the floor to the, my colleague Celine, which will talk more deeply about the accommodation. Thank you, Roberto. So good morning, everybody. Uh, I will talk on behalf of the Blue Growth community. I would like also to mention that uh, I'm part of the Sustainable Task Force of UNEP MAP who worked a lot of, uh, uh, on this issue of how organizing uh, this sustainable event. So now I will focus uh, on uh, the accommodation. Um, ideally, um, it's better to choose a hotel with an environmental management system. Uh, many labels uh, already exist, uh, for instance, uh, the green key, and uh, if uh, you want to organize uh, an event and you are searching for accommodation. If you search for eco-friendly hotel, you can already find some lists in different cities in the Mediterranean. It can help you also to choose a, a good hotel. Uh, of course, we already said that, but it should be located within walking distance to public transport in order to reduce the carbon footprint. Uh, the hotel should be fully uh, accessible to those with uh, special needs and um, it's important also to choose a hotel uh, who 
is uh, implementing a water efficiency uh, policy. Uh, just to give you an idea, for instance, the treatment of hotel bed, bed linen represents in France uh, 470,000 tons of CO2 emitted per year, which is the equivalent of a town of 60,000 inhabitants. It's huge. It's also more than 10 million cubic meters of water used per year. So uh, it, it's very important uh, to favor uh, such hotel. And um, we already said that, but if you can work with local supplier, it's also a, a good option. And it's uh, really important to educate and inform customers. Uh, I think it, it's it's um, it's for for all uh, these issues. It's important to inform uh, participants uh, to the event before the event itself. For instance, in the invitation that uh, you will uh, put the priority to organize a sustainable event and. Um, I also recommend to calculate the CO2 footprint uh, at the end of each event and to inform the participants because they should be aware of uh, what was the footprint of such event when you care about the sustainability and the eco-friendly choices. For example, uh, some projects uh, like Consume Less uh, develops uh, integrated sustainable energy, water, and waste management strategies, and has a list of criteria to, reserve, to receive uh, sorry, a certification. And other projects, such as Cat Water, developed a tool to monitor the water sustainability performance of the tourism sector. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Celine, and thank you, Roberto, for this uh, complex overview related to the venue and accommodation. And uh, I see that this topic generated some discussions and some questions on, uh, on the chat, and we're glad about it. So I will invite you to have a look at the questions that w to which we will try to respond in uh, the last part uh, dedicated to the discussion with the participants. Uh, and I encourage the rest of you to uh, to continue to address questions and doubts over the chat because this is one of the purposes for which we are organizing this webinar. Okay, moving forward, uh, we have seen uh, uh, what we eat at our what we should eat at our events, where we should how we should select the premises and the accommodation that we propose to the participants. But of course, each time we need to reach. An event and the transport has a high environmental impact in general in everything that is related to the organization of events. This is why we decided to dedicate a specific topic to urban transport and to the travel options that the participants have to reach um, uh, to reach an event. And in this sense, I will invite our colleague Carlos Carlos Sanchez to introduce us in this topic. So, Carlos, the floor is yours now. Hello. Yes, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you very well. Perfect. So, hello to everyone. I'm Carlos from Horizontal uh, Project. Carlos? Yes. Uh, now there are some interruptions in, yeah. Um, yeah, in your intervention. Perhaps you should stay very close to the microphone. Yeah. I try it. Better now? Yes, now it's better. better. So I, I, I am Carlos from the I'm the coordinator regarding the transport. Uh, Carlos, sorry, I'll uh, I'll interrupt you again. Sorry for this, but so there are some uh, again some interruptions in uh, uh, in your presentation. I don't know what is happening. It's either because of the microphone or uh, because of the connection. So when you speak initially, we can hear you very well, but afterwards we lose you. Okay. I don't know why. Can you try? Can you try again? Let's see if it works now. Yes. I Start again. You can interrupt me. 
uh, have uh, um, some uh, technical problems. Maybe. We have again the same problem, and I think that uh, it's not only me; it's also the colleagues that are written on uh, um, are writing on the chat that they cannot hear you. So perhaps you can, if you have another microphone available, or uh, I am afraid that, that this uh, that not, uh, this is the only one that I have. Uh, because in fact we can hear a sort of yeah background noise and an echo. Oh. Um, so perhaps if you lo lower the volume, it I might be. It. I'm not a. I will try to okay. lower the volume. Of it's, it's okay now. Um, now I think it's too low, but try to increase it a bit. Now, it's, it's now it's so now it sounds good. But uh, let's see if it yeah let's see if it works. If not, I apologize in advance. I will interrupt you again because if we cannot hear you, it's really a pity. And you yeah. Okay. So let's try and see if it works. I tried. Uh, okay. I, I have been talking about the the, the recommendations done by the by the the team who have prepared the the, the webinar, and uh, I will add some uh, some other. From the transport community. So first of all, I will talk about public transport. And uh, okay, um, yes, uh, uh, public transport is uh, first of all. I I recommend to 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 have a strategy uh, regarding uh, uh, transport uh, responsible with the, the, the team to optimize the transport of persons and goods in the meetings, for the events. Uh, uh, to ensure the, the easy access to the public transport and accommodations, some things I say the, by other colleagues, um, uh, to recommend the accommodation options situated as close as possible uh, to conference facilities, uh, working distance or reachable public transport and uh, uh, to negotiate uh, partnerships with public transport operators from the city to, to propose special lines for the event, uh, event location and uh, uh, to reduce the need of transport by using uh, tele and video conferencing. Of course. Uh, the second uh, thing is uh, regarding sharing systems. Um, it's, uh, it's necessary to inform participants of the public sh uh, sharing transportation systems in the area, uh, regarding cars or bikes and bicycles, and uh, the possibility to use it. Uh, I, I think that's all the main cities uh, where we uh, have these uh, this events have uh, some sharing uh, systems for transportation. Um, within the framework of the mid-term, uh, as, as an example, uh, in the mid-term event in Barcelona, we plan to group uh, all the participants together in the same city area and uh, giving instruction to promote uh, sharing vehicles among them. Also, uh, we organize uh, common trips by renting electric buses to be used during the visits. Um, I, I think that is a very uh, sustainable practice. Um, regarding uh, information and communications, uh, it's necessary to provide uh, clear instructions to the participants on appropriate public transport or a working arrangement arrival or departure. Uh, I mean, uh, railway stations, airports, uh, venues. Uh, the accommodation and the town center for the visits, etc. Uh, regarding uh, the carbon foot footprint, footprint uh, okay, uh, we encourage the participants to select trains and guidelines using CO2 offset programs, and uh, who they, where, where they consider a CO2 compensation instruments. Uh, to measure the, the carbon footprint of the travel, uh, there is uh, there are some some uh, 
websites where you can do that very easily uh, after each event uh, through the airport. Events or on travels. Um, the, to, to try to reduce uh, the car pollution emissions, uh, trying uh, to, to share the, the, the cars and, and to, to slow down the speed. Uh, regarding uh, okay, the awareness of, is, is uh, something really important to, to be aware of importance to small actions each one of us uh, because so small things of many people can can get a few big impact. Uh, as a suggestion for the people in charge of the, in charge of the catering, uh, I, I, a, a friend of mine said that if you want to really reduce the carbon footprint, uh, be vegan. So uh, to, to do not eat meat is, is the, the way to reduce more the GHG uh, um, uh, Regarding a, a slogan, uh, yeah, uh, a friend of mine as, as well said that uh, uh, for less than three kilometers I work from ten to ten, three to ten kilometers I use my bicycle and from ten kilometers onwards I use the public transport. It's a good slogan participants uh, regarding uh, and uh, at least uh, maybe it's uh, it's a good idea to facilitate to the participants the use of public transport through the use of tickets for city visitors maybe a tourist card or something like that that's all Sorry. okay Thank you, Carlos. I think at the end uh, we reached an equilibrium. So we heard uh, most of, uh, of what you said. When we couldn't hear it very well, we, uh, we understood between the lines and also the fact that you had uh, the slides, it helped us a lot. And it's clear that for the mobility side, which is really um, waiting a lot in the environmental footprint of the event, the solutions that we have at our disposal are much more uh, easy to be implemented. And I think your presentation gave us some good hints to do it. Meanwhile, I, uh, I see that there are other questions in the chat, which is really, uh, which is really good, and I'm keen to take them over and address them to the speakers uh, at the end of this very last presentation, but not the least. So we have talked until now a lot about environmental issues related to the organization of events, but as I was saying at the beginning, the events, they have impacts not only in terms of environment, but also in social and economic terms because they are taking place in communities. Uh, so for this last point, how do we deal with the local economy if we can promote it and how we can ensure the community involvement? Uh, I will pass the floor to the last um, to, uh, to uh, our creative uh, and uh, social community from Interreg Med and uh, Luis, Ana, so Luis Navarro, Ana Liberti, uh, the floor is yours to introduce us in this very last topic of um... Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, I think uh, I'm, 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 I'm the one who is going to, to present uh, this uh, creative perspective in the, in the event as my colleagues could then make it to, to join us. Um, well, I'm Luis Navarro, I'm project manager at the Guadalinfo Living Land Network in Andalusia in South Spain. And I'm also a component of the, of the social and creative uh, community of the Internet Med. Uh, I'm here to present uh, some uh, tips and best practice uh, when running creative events in terms of local economy and, and community engagement. Uh, starting with uh, okay, organizing creative events, uh, piggyback it on, on other, other events, uh, normally those coming from the modular project. Uh, they this uh, conjunction of events represent a big opportunity 
to apply a creative approach uh, to the to the host, also enriching uh, through creativeness uh, the the topic being treated in the in the host event. Uh, in terms of uh, greening the event, uh, it is not only important because of the travel impact, but also uh, when it comes to sharing resources, economics, uh, communication, audience, and as a result, uh, okay, uh, as a as a result, uh, we are minimizing uh, environmental impact and uh, boosting uh, community building. Uh, another practice is organizing a scattered event like festival uh, using a contiguous uh, location. This way we allow to, to address several targets in different topics in a row, in a multi ten event. Uh, again, um, as the previous point, uh, we are gaining uh, efficient. Yes? Luis, sorry to interrupt you. We, uh, it seems we have some problems with the slides because uh, someone is moving on and forward with them. So uh, if you don't mind, if you can use the arrows to come back to the slides which are allocated for the presentation on local uh, economy and community involvement. So just use the back arrow to come to come back okay. because myself uh, now we are on the on the appropriate uh, I think uh, now now we are on the slide which is called next steps this is the one that we are seeing it yeah so that's why I interfered in your presentation and I apologize for it so just uh, use your arrows because I think okay. uh, now in my screen I, I see the local economy and the community involvement I don't know. The, okay, the, perhaps it's only the, missing. Uh, no, it's okay. It's uh, the, the correct one. I also confirm. Okay. okay. So Thank you, and I apologize for <laughs> No worries, no worries. <laughs> uh, after the, the, I was on the, on the second point, on the organizing the scattered event as an opportunity to address different targets and different topics in a row in a multi ten event in terms of efficiency. We are gaining efficiency. And also, uh, we are spreading the message. Next point is, uh, okay, using uh, digital communication when promoting the event, but avoid using only one directing, directing communication. Uh, I mean, we are used to only put a post on social media and so on, but not promoting uh, interaction with the participant. It is very important as it comes an, as an opportunity to, to, to generate expectation. We can use uh, or we recommend to use creative techniques such as context, uh, treasures, hunt, for instance, through social media. This way we can reach a, a bigger impact. Uh, we can generate a big expectation uh, around the event. Uh, obviously, bigger impact than printing a, a brochure, which is uh, should be strictly prohibited. <laughs> uh, in terms of uh, communication during the events, uh, well, providing information to participants through web platforms, uh, social media, QR codes. Also, when it comes to 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 design a very complex event, we can. We can think of uh, developing a native app, but in case the the event is normal, we I think we can we can manage to communicate uh, in an efficient way using uh, only a website or a blog. And uh, particularly, uh, I'm a strong supporter of using uh, of using instant communication uh, tools like. Uh, Telegram channels. I think it is very easy to create and to share, probably through, through, I think that someone is moving again the, the slide. Well, I, I go on. Using Telegram uh, channel uh, to instant uh, reply to participant and to instant uh, provide a feedback with 
she's a big motivator to maintain all the people engaged with the events. Also, it allows to to communicate to communicate without using or sharing our phone numbers. So privacy is is a must in these cases. Last one is the last recommendation is using local resources, local creatives, and local artists when designing the the creative event. I mean, as we are building the community from the local to the transnational, it is very important. Uh, that the local events are based on the local resources, not only in terms of environmental impact, but also as an opportunity of visibility and community building. Next, in the next, last uh, slide, we have uh, some examples. For example, the first one, someone again moved the, the slide. I think that, that now. Uh, we have the, the, this event in Bestino in, in October uh, 2017. Uh, it is an example of a scattered event, uh, different locations, different shows, different uh, audience, bigger impact on media as more communication resources were produced. And Obviously, a uh, more uh, wider audience uh, was addressed. Also, we have uh, the Chimera modular project as an example of the online communication of events. Uh, they are very good, especially on you know, using the, the, the social media. And we have as an example of festival, the Creative World Festival in Prato, Italy, uh, back on the TCBL uh, 2018 as a fashion change. Um, okay, that's, that's all from my, from my side. Great, thank you, Luis. And um, because you had, uh, you had the presentation on creative events, we have been also creative in moving <laughs> back and forth with the slides. I think uh, <laughs> it is always happening when um, uh, more than one person have the right to, um, to use the presentation. Uh, but I think at the end, yeah, we, st we stick to the, to the right slides. Thanks for this uh, very nice and interesting ideas on how to make our events not only greener, but also more sustainable from an economic, social, and even cultural viewpoint. Uh, and um, now, as I, as I said in the agenda, we had foreseen around 20 minutes, now it will be, let's say, 17, uh, dedicated to a discussion among all the participants. And if you agree, I would first of all take the questions that have been addressed in the chat and that have not yet been answered in uh, the chronological order. Uh, so first of all, we had a question on the catering side from Ioannis that was asking if, we, if, there, if there is any accreditation that we can ask to the catering companies uh, to show that the products and the services that are providing, they are green and sustainable. And uh, I think Sonsoles from the Biodiversity Protection Community could take this one, um, could take this question and, and respond to us. What do you think, Sonsoles? Well, thank you, Anna, for um, this um, introduction um, and the question itself. Um, yeah, there are lots of um, initiatives going on trying to um, labelize, uh, let's say, the origin of the uh, produce. And uh, there are also some more stiff standards, like the international standardization organization standards that some catering companies uh, need to apply. Uh, but if we take the guidelines as the as of our source of information to try and select the best uh, catering uh, solutions for our events, I think we we already have uh, quite a lot of hints on how to do this. I mean, we have a promotion of the local resources and uh, seasonal produce. You have the zero kilometer restaurants also where they um, uh, diminish the uh, the energy spent in transportation for these kind of goods. Um, we have a series of uh, minimum requests on the catering company not to use uh, single-use items, uh, remove plastic if possible, and so on. So I think that could be a good um, a good starting point. Again, finding a Mediterranean standard we can um, apply, uh, 
perhaps some of the projects in our communities have uh, real concrete uh, documents or guidelines that we could use. But at the end of our current guidelines, we have included a series of uh, standard documents like sustainability guidelines for, for events and catering. So I'll invite you to revisit these guidelines uh, after the webinar, go through them, and, uh, and suggest uh, other links or other initiatives or standards that you think would be useful for, for this event. Um, I don't know if this will answer the question or... Thank you, so, so let's, I think, I personally think it did, uh, but otherwise uh, I'm kindly inviting you also to discuss more in detail in the chat section in case there are other, uh, let's say, doubts uh, around the initial question. Um, then uh, there were some questions related to the venue accommodation and energy consumption in general. Uh, so let's try to see how we approach them. Uh, I'll address the first one perhaps to Roberto, uh, which is linked to the labels for the hotels. So are there any labels, environmental friendly or sustainable friendly labels that we could add to, to the hotels or to the places where we accommodate our participants, Roberto? Uh, yes, for sure. I don't see the question actually, um, but yes, there are a lot of labels that we can use. Uh, it's it's just a matter of the site which one is fitting better to the place, of course. Uh, what we show in our presentation was the example of a project which is consumeless. <clears throat> which is mm, giving a label to mainly accommodation places, uh, places for accommodation or other business uh, that uh, are respecting some criteria of sustainability. Uh, but of course, there are a lot of labels around. We, of course, support this one from consumerless because it's uh, coming from uh, um, coming from our community, which is uh, so. Then we consider it is a good example to follow um, <clears throat> and to promote as well. Uh, then uh, I, I saw that there was another question for for us uh, put on the table. It was this uh, comparison. Uh, let's say difficult decision among. Uh, less less uh, crowded venues and uh, the way to to organize a, a sustainable event and uh, I think there is just to, uh, um, to answer to Ioannis uh, Mardikis there is no uh, one solution that fits all the problems uh, one one solution that fits all and that solve all the um, the the, pro the the problems. But the concept here, here to use is that uh, if we uh, organize the event in a place that is less visited, less far from the mass tourism places, uh, we have for sure, uh, or in the low season, we have for sure a positive impact on the local communities, uh, economical and social and so on. On the other side, the reverse uh, of the, the coin is that we must work more to ensure that uh, it is sustainable also from the other points of view. It means that the venue has some basic services, for example, the Wi-Fi or the, the good size, as I was mentioning before, or, and it is very important to organize the transport in a way that uh, people uh, should not go to the venue uh, using their uh, proper, their personal uh, way of transport, but they should use both the public transport or we should, the organizers should uh, um, uh, organize a, a common transport for all. Um, I don't know if I, I can I can answer I, I'm answering to the questions 
in this way. Uh, many, many points has been, have been underlined by the, the speakers that um, spoke before me and also uh, after. Uh, Carlos was explaining uh, very well what we should think about when we organize the event outside the main, the main path, let's say. Um, and then also regarding the, the carbon footprint calculator, uh, yes, there are a lot of uh, calculators, uh, a, a lot of companies around the world uh, that are um, working on this uh, carbon footprint calculator. What it is important to say here is that um, you have two uh, aspects to consider. The first one is that if you organize an event, and there are calculators that help, help you to calculate your CO2 footprint, let's say your CO2 consumption. And then also there are uh, same companies or other companies that uh, can help you to, uh, let's say, reduce your um, CO2 consumption for um, um, putting in, in practice some green activities, let's say, for example, planting trees. You, you calculate your CO2 footprint uh, and you can, um, you can reduce it paying to a company to plant trees, for example. Uh, I know that Celine uh, wanted to answer this question as well, but I don't see her in the chat uh, yes. anymore. Yes, she's yes. in the chat. So uh, you, I'm here. here. <laughs> ah, okay, uh, Celine, do, sorry, do you... Sorry, I didn't see you. Do you want to to add something yes, to, to yes, that? Yes, sure. Sorry yeah, I that. can say that we, <laughs> we use the in uh, for the Innovo Growth Project uh, the same uh, calculator as for the UN Sustainable Task Force. This is um, myclimate.org. I wrote the link uh, in the chat for everybody. And um, at the bottom of the page, you have uh, event. So if you click on event, uh, you have different questions about the, the event duration, if it's an air conditioned area, the number of people arriving by car, the average distance traveled. So what I uh, recommend uh, uh, to you, I think uh, all of you as an assessment survey at the end of the event and you should add a paragraph some questions about the um, the mean the, tr the mean of transport to know exactly for each of participants uh, from where they come uh, by flight or by car or by public transport and it it will help you to reply to all the questions in this questionnaire online on the website that I uh, shared with you. And uh, at the end, um, so th th the most important uh, impact is from uh, the, the travel, of course, the, the mean of travel, the accommodation, but also the use of paper and the catering. So you will find uh, all the categories we talked about during this presentation and uh, at the end uh, it will give you an estimate of the um, of your CO2 footprint for the event uh, you organized and uh, as I mentioned um, to Roberto you have also the possibility not on this site but on other websites to offset uh, any remaining emissions um, using uh, high quality carbon offset projects, for instance, uh, plant trees, energy projects. So you, you have several uh, possibilities depending of the, the region of your event. Sometimes you have some local projects, uh, but, but the issue is always uh, the budget. So who pay? 
for this uh, offset of uh, remaining emissions, the participants themselves or the organizer of this event. And uh, to be honest, it, it increases a lot of the, the budget plan for the, for the organization of any event if you include this, this part. But the first uh, key step for a carbon neutral event is uh, to calculate and to measure your carbon uh, footprint. Indeed. Thank you, Celine, uh, for, um, for this. And I see that there are a lot of useful resources that are being shared on the chat, and this is very good. So I invite you until the end of our conversation to, to consult it and, uh, and take the links that are going to be exchanged there. Um, there was also another question from a participant, uh, from a participant on how can we prove, if we can prove, that our event is sustainable. And here I will just uh, give you one information and then I will let also my colleagues if they would like to interfere. Uh, there are different labels, national, not labels, certifications, national and international, that apply to, uh, to the area of event sustainability. The most important one, in our opinion, is the ISO one, which is ISO 21021 which is applying to the event organizers and that gives you a high credibility when you are saying that you organize a sustainable event. Uh, it's good to keep in mind that there is no sustainable event by default and uh, as, um, as it's the case when we speak about environmental or quality management, it should be a work in progress based on the uh, plan to check act approach so you should start with the first steps that are most uh, um, approachable and at your disposal and then to show that from one year to another and from one edition to another of the event you are making more and more efforts even if you start really with shy steps. Uh, I don't know if there are uh, other colleagues speakers that would like to comment on this how can we prove that an event is sustainable and green Uh, if if uh, if I can add something, uh, Anna, uh, because uh, now regarding to the energy part, that probably uh, it's it's really interesting that my climate uh, um, website that it was Selena um, recommending, and it's true that for example, energy it's so very uh, abstract and it's difficult to visualize it. So. I think that, um, as I was saying, probably to encourage the idea of having like livable spaces and comfortable and healthy spaces in terms of uh, lighting and ventilation, I think it's a uh, it's a good way to visualize them. So, uh, of course, maybe you don't have the luxes and the the, the specific numbers for this. But you can have good pictures and 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 the way that you, the people are are having the um, are, are enjoying these kind of uh, spaces and of course having some images about uh, photovoltaic panels or uh, reusing of uh, water systems can help just to visualize them and uh, so that the the power in my in my consideration about the uh, communication material it's it's really good and in the in terms of energy because as I said it's very abstract when you only talk about the number. Yeah indeed. Thank you. Thank you uh, Cynthia for this intervention. And I see that we have one person who raised the hand to speak, it's Anna Marine. So I will give the floor to her and it will be the last intervention before having the joint secretariat colleagues that will present the approach of the JS concerning sustainable events. So Anna we we can I hope we can hear you. So do not hesitate to share your thoughts with us. Uh, Anna. Well, I guess it's not anymore the case. Uh, ah, you don't have a microphone. Okay. Perhaps if you want, so you can quickly uh, um, ask the question in the chat, and we'll pass it. To the um, to the to the speaker that is targeted by it, or 
Okay, perhaps uh, towards the end of the presentation we'll have the time to to respond to it. But as I would like to be uh, punctual also because I know that the colleagues from the Joint Secretariat cannot say too much with us um, and hoping that they join us in the conversation that we will have with us uh, Sophie and Francesca. So in case you are um, in the chat room and you can hear us and uh, if you can unmute your phone and share with us uh, the approach of Interreg Med concerning sustainable e events, it would be great. Okay. So I see that Francesca is writing that you can start. So we just need to unmute your phone. And we have the slide that you wanted to present, uh, which is which is here in front of us. Um, but Francesca, I don't see a microphone connected to uh, to your uh, profile. Um, Francesca, Sophie, can uh, if you can hear us, it would be good if you can write on the chat and um, try to see if we can find the microphone so that we can hear you speaking because for the time being we cannot. Can hear us? Yes, Hello. I can hear you now. Hello. Okay. Hello. Great. Hello. Hello. Welcome. Thank you. We don't know if it's time for us now to present. I'm afraid we can hear you rather uh, uh, rather bad. Can you perhaps you can try to play a little bit with the microphone and see if we can improve the quality? Let's try again. Yes. Okay. Uh, I think it's oh, we can hear you with some interruptions, but let, let's uh, let, let's try and see if it works. If not, I will apologize in advance, but I will interrupt you in case it, we cannot hear you. But in principle, we can hear. We can. You can hear. It's okay. 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 So we would like to first to congratulate uh, you all uh, for organizing this. Uh, webinar and for uh, uh, this initiative on the green uh, event uh, uh, and part of our own project that is more than that as a social activity and uh, indeed, uh, we have uh, 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 in, the, uh, in our approach, the uh, part from the application, consider the input uh, and the uh, objective of sustainable development in the project treatment. And uh, for that, we take care of that all projects, uh, that all projects uh, measure with the self assessment uh, uh, tool questionnaire um, how much they uh, comply with horizontal principles. Uh, in that case, the bottom of projects are going to be from the beginning of the project to the end. So, of course, include all the projects that we uh, and implement the green event initiative uh, to uh, identify uh, 
uh, deep in the question at the end of the project. Uh, in the next call for proposal also, we will make a specific reference to initiatives in order to enhance the participation of all new projects also um, in this initiative. And uh, as a main program, of course, we try as much as possible to uh, <laughs> comply also with, um, uh, with all the proposals for Green Island. Uh, with the event, uh, with that, it is the midterm event, and we will try now uh, to, uh, to, to, to implement this also in all our uh, other events and in the event of our. Um, activities, programs. Uh, so thank you all for, for, for this involvement. I think that really is a very, very good initiative and example of how, what we can do all together and how we can move and change things all together in our own. But finally, so this we are trying all together to change um, uh, the mentality, to change the, uh, the the way we are working and we are uh, implementing all our activities, not only the main projects, but in our institutions. So, changing uh, this kind of uh, way of organizing for the main program, we make all our institutions also uh, maybe uh, other uh, activities etc. So it's a very positive and small steps that we will make a change uh, our main area. Thank you. Um, thank you, Sophie. Thank you, Francesca. Um, uh, we have uh, understood a part of your intervention because, unfortunately, I think the internet connection is not uh, optimal. But we also see on the slide that you presented the main uh, the main ideas that you also shared with us. Mm -hmm. and uh, uh, we are very happy that you find useful the work that uh, we have been jointly doing for the sustainable guidelines for events. Even mm -hmm. if, um, indeed, as Celine was saying before, that uh, th this work on how we can improve the sustainability of our events has been done for quite a long time by various mm -hmm. international institutions, among which the most important is UNEP. What mm -hmm. I think is really um, exciting and innovative in the approach that we are doing is that we try mm -hmm. to see, okay, how can we organize a sustainable event by, by, but by putting together the tools and the approaches and the know-how that mm -hmm. each of us from our modular and horizontal projects we have because mm -hmm. we are all developing different approaches and tools that are useful mm -hmm. in different areas including when we are trying to, um, to organize an event otherwise. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, one idea that uh, Dania, I see that she's uh, writing in the chat that one one idea would be that the program, the, the Interreg Med, is promoting uh, the, this initiative, the sustainability guidelines toward other, towards mm -hmm. other Interreg programs, because it can be a good initiative to be followed up by other joint secretariats. Also, as we already have a lot of examples from our projects within the guidelines. Yes, we have already uh, planned to have a date, uh, information on the website uh, on this session, on this subject, and that's a very good idea uh, to, uh, to communicate and other indirect programs, and we will do it uh, whenever we have a session on our next uh, and to answer the question, we have already and we adapted now also updated the information around the information and link it to the information we have on the website. So I think that that's why uh, we Uh, 
Sophia, I think we lost you now for the last, uh, I mean, we can hear you badly now, but we've lost you completely, I think, for the last phrase. Can you repeat it, please? Uh, yes, we said, I said that uh, we have already learned Unfortunately, it cut off uh, again. Uh, so, I, I, if I uh, if I understood it properly, so the idea is that you are promoting, you will promote the guidelines both on the website of Interreg Med, but also towards other towards other Interreg programs, which uh, it's a, uh, we consider to be a very good initiative. And perhaps if there are other things that you would like to share with us, you could do it on the chat because unfortunately, uh, we cannot. Well, we cannot understand due to the to the internet connection. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I will write it. <laughs> Thanks. And uh, before uh, before saying goodbye to all of you, just a couple of very quick ideas on what are the next steps uh, because we have seen the plans of, of the Joint Secretariat on uh, from our side of the uh, horizontal projects and from the thematic communities, what we would plan to do in the future, but it depends also a lot on the feedback that you give to us as participants, um, taking into account uh, the um, large number of persons that uh, show their interest to attend this webinar, we could think to plan periodical similar webinars in the future, generally addressing the topic of sustainability in the event organization based on the guidelines that, uh, that we have uh, produced. Um, uh, we can also think to organize, for example, dedicated webinars on specific themes that could be more complicated. For example, we have seen with Cynthia that dealing with energy when trying to organize a sustainable event is not so obvious. So we could also take into account to organize uh, thematic webinars related to sustainable events. Also, as we mentioned at the beginning, the guidelines that you will be able to download at the end of this presentation and also from the InterregMed website, they are work in progress and we are very happy to receive feedback on it. And uh, beyond feedback, we would be very happy to receive contributions from the different projects uh, related to the tools and approaches that they are developing and that could be of use for the event organizers. And, of course, that ourselves as horizontal projects, we will use the guidelines in the activities that we are doing, especially in the joint activities that we are planning. And one of it will be in November uh, within Eco, um, Ecomondo um, event. Uh, and it was uh, also in, uh, in the slide, there was the last idea related to what we can do in the future, but as I don't have the slide in front of me, I will, uh, I will jump over it. Um, okay. Um, I see the colleagues, they heard me and they probably, they will put the last slide, so thanks for it. Because, uh, yeah, so uh, the last idea was sharing the information and market solution in various areas because uh, it's not so difficult to think how a sustainable event may look like, but it's very difficult to find solutions on the market in your cities, in your region, or even in your country. And I think a very good value added by working together in Interact Med community is that we can, uh, we are hundreds of partners and we can easily share different type of tricks and uh, and um, solutions that we can find on the market, and this way we can ease our life. Well, before saying goodbye, uh, as I was mentioning previously, so our colleagues uh, from the Biodiversity Protection, they have prepared to you a section um, on the screen from where you can download the guidelines and also the PowerPoint presentations that we have used today. Uh, as I said, the guidelines will be constantly improved and we will put the updated versions on Inter Interreg Med website, but for the time being you can uh, download the ones that have been used for today's presentation. 
Uh, and in the next edition, we will also add at the end the various solutions and resources that you have exchanged with us uh, in the chat option. Uh, last, uh, we would like to thank the Horizontal Project representatives for taking the time to exchange among themselves and to work together for this, um, for this joint initiative that I think is very welcomed and that is giving us enthusiasm to continue to, um, uh, to do similar ones in the future. Uh, thanks for the, to the JS that uh, you took the time to be present and share with us your, um, your ideas. And uh, of course, a very special thanks to the, the Biodiversity Protection Community uh, for sharing the technical, uh, the technological solution that enable us today to meet, uh, of course, with ups and downs, because it's not the same to meet face to face. But the online solution can be a good alternative if we want to reduce the ecological footprint. Um, and I think that uh, the, the solution that the colleagues from the biodiversity community they put at disposal is very useful and intuitive. And uh, thanks for um, for uh, share, having shared it with us. Uh, uh, it's a long summer ahead of us. We hope that this webinar gave you the context to take some ideas home and to think about them. And let's hope that starting with the autumn, we will have um, a virtuous circle of practices concerning sustainable events in our InterregMed community. And um, we will be glad to hear from you on how the webinar went and to listen to your ideas on the next steps. And for this, we'll send you in the days to come uh, an evaluation questionnaire. And we would highly appreciate if you'll take five minutes to answer to it. OK. Thanks to all of you and uh, have a nice, uh, uh, a nice day, uh, week and, uh, and summer. Goodbye. Thank you, everybody. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you, everybody. Bye bye.